out down please broadside I don't often get lost for words, and at the moment, um, I'm pretty lost for words. There's been a long discussion about whether we were going to uh, show Rhino due to, for obvious reasons, and I, uh, I really thought it was important, but also understand why we need to just touch on the subject and the subject is that these animals are under uh, massive threat and it's a very, very hot topic around the world at the moment world leaders are actually talking about it today and tomorrow uh, the wildlife trade is the fourth biggest, the illegal wildlife trade is the fourth biggest illegal industry, cash industry in the world and uh, sadly these guys are cop it and I'm not going to bang on too much about why, what, where and how because you can get massive amounts of information online about that through incredible organisations that dedicate their lives, as uh, many of us do, to uh, protecting the five species of rhinoceros in the world. But um, I think today we should talk about the magic and the beauty of these individuals and a little bit about what they do and how incredible they are. We've got white rhinoceros in front of us, folks, which not only do we have white rhinoceros in front of us, we've got grazing, very calm, not running off into the uh, bushes, uh, which is sometimes how you see rhinos, as a little glimpsing, a little glimpse of them. Um, they are doing exactly what rhin white rhinoceros are designed for, grazing. These are a grazing animal, whereas the black rhinoceros is a browsing animal. So they're both designed differently. Uh, one has a prehensile upper lip, which is the black rhino, which is designed specifically for browsing off uh, trees and can reach out and pull those those branches. I'm um, not like a giraffe, of course, but the, the 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 vegetation that's at their height, their head height, and a little bit higher that they can reach, and they will pull that back into the uh, to the ground uh, to their mouth and grind it up. They don't have an incredibly efficient digestive system uh, like elephants don't. You can see rhino dung, and you can definitely tell the difference between rhino dung, uh, between the black rhino and the white rhino, because the white rhino's dung is really fine grass, uh, just particles of grass. You'll never see any sticks in it um, unless it's actually accidentally been eaten. Uh, but the, white, the black rhino's dung has broken bits of twig and undigested twig in it, and you can definitely tell the difference between both. We have... Uh, a couple of fantastic individuals here. Very much more... This is just... Uh, to me... To me, this is um, something that I, we, we talked long and hard about uh, and we thought it was necessary that we talked about them. This is a one-off and this will be the only time that we show them. And what a great privilege it is uh, for me to show you and talk to you about um, why these animals are so important. And, oh goodness, I don't know where to start, but to have them standing right in front of us like this so casually and so uh, relaxed is a dream come true. Um, we've got zebra off in the distance as well. Uh, it's a beautiful scene. But this male at the back is just in prime condition. Have a look at the size of him. He's just to the left. Uh, he is a cracking looking individual. 
a beautiful boy. These are southern white rhinoceros, and uh, what a perfect individual he is. This is the animal I came to Africa for. This is what I wanted to come and see. 22 years ago, I came to see these guys. And I can't believe that I'm sitting here now telling you about that story 22 years later with a southern white rhinoceros approaching my vehicle. Easy. You guys just go easy. Eh? They're about uh, 20 meters, about 60 feet from us at the moment. No, maybe less. About 15 meters, about 45 feet, I'd say, I'd guess. And they're just grazing their way towards us at the moment. You can see that beautiful square lip how perfectly designed that is. This really is the only pure grazer. You won't find these guys really eating anything else but grass. Tender grass, doing the best they possibly can wherever they can. Ah, oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? These guys are the second biggest, second biggest land mammal after elephants. And I don't know what it is, folks. I don't know why I am so fascinated with these creatures, but they just, they just really are in my soul. There's something so prehistoric about them, something that we just don't connect with. Uh, but there's, there's, oh, he's going to lie down. This one's about to lie down. Well, that's how comfortable that one is with how close I am. Okay, my boy. calming, beautiful experience. He's about 10 meters, I'd say, from me. It's okay, my boy. Fantastic sense of smell. Anything that will alert them, they will run. They find us very comfortable at the moment. But if they pick up a scent of something, not that they have to fear many, many things, that's for sure, but uh, anything that alerts them, they will just get up and uh, run at speed.
little bit of posturing behaviour going on here, ever so slightly. One saying to the other one, just move away, don't disturb me. just whilst you're watching these beautiful pictures of these animals. Gosh, they're magnificent, aren't they? some quite incredible behaviour here, folks. to see this behaviour. It's absolute. Quite incredible to see that behaviour. The male just came up and had a little bit of a, a tantrum. This is a one-off, folks. This really is a one-off. We're not going to be showing Rhino again for obvious reasons. It's sad but true that that's the situation on the planet at the moment. If you would like to know more information about that sort of thing, there's amazing organisations online that you can get update with the rhino situation on in the world. But as we speak, there are world leaders talking about it at the moment and it has to change. Something has to happen. Something has to happen to protect these incredible creatures. I don't know what it is and what connected me as a, as a young man. I remember from a very young age that I was absolutely fascinated with Rhino. And now, here I am, nearly 50, sitting here talking to you live from the bush about the animal I came to see in Africa. Well. Wow. I tell you, I'll never forget this moment. There's a lot of standoffing, standing off position, <laughs> positioning going on here, folks, at the moment. Um, the behaviour is very interesting to see. The white rhinos are much more gregarious. You will see them potentially in uh, small groups like this, uh, but sometimes just individuals but uh, you can sometimes see even more congregating together than this, whereas black rhinoceros are completely solitary, only really come together to mate, and uh, you, very, you see them very rarely. But wow, to have three white rhinos stand in front of us right now, live. They're 
can't get this one out there. I'm in a bit of a position here, folks, where I'm hanging out the door of the vehicle because otherwise my head's in the way. So I've sort of got myself hanging over the edge of the car at the moment. Okay, Liam, if I can just sit up for a second, I'm going to have my head's going to come through shot, folks, excuse me. There we go, oh, that's a bit better. Wow, 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 wow. How lucky is this? These white rhino are actually nearly double the weight of a black rhino. Double the weight. There's been recordings, I'm pretty sure of my memory, <laughs> my memory of what's left of it in, uh, in these years, my memory of what I've read and things, but somewhere around uh, to over 2,000 kilograms, which uh, that's got to be, I think, 2,200 kilograms or something like that, which has got to be around 5,000 pounds or something, just under 5,000 pounds. Extraordinary size of these creatures, these big, particularly the big bulls. So quiet, I'm so relaxed. I have seen some uh, some footage of white rhino congregating around a waterhole in, uh, in a, a place very, very close by here. And there was 11 individuals all tolerating each other. And uh, it's quite a thing, quite a thing to see. Just standing motionless at the moment. One of them doing a little bit of grazing. And uh, the bull that had his tantrum, uh, he's got his head on the, on the sand down there. Well, oh goodness, this is just an incredible moment for me, guys. All the people that I know that work and dedicate their lives to protecting these guys, um, I definitely want you to to hear how thankful there's so many people in the world that are so thankful for the work that you do. Guys that put their lives on the line protecting these animals, men and women all over Africa and Asia uh, with the Asian rhinos. But uh, the ones that we're talking about today is men and women that put their lives on the line, dedicate endless We got it. You can see this younger 
younger one up close. Beautiful facial features. Quite a small eye for a massive animal, isn't it? It looks uh, proportionately a little odd. Uh, their eyesight isn't their, one of their strongest senses, but their sense of hearing and their sense of smell are absolutely fantastic. they're in folks through my binoculars they look in beautiful condition said this is the only time that we're going to uh, to show Rhino and let's just bask in the glory that they are and how wonderful these creatures are to be around you don't even get this sighting very often folks this this close proximity uh, where they they tolerate us as long as they have this boy at the back here he is an absolute sensation he's going to coming our way Oxpeckers on him as well, red-billed oxpeckers doing a great job, uh, always fantastic, they do ride on rhino a lot and look like they trouble the rhino, go right inside their ears, uh, remove parasites and still have that uh, alarm call which also helps the rhino uh, to know when, when danger is approaching. We've got these other two individuals going off behind us. Uh, they're just walking down the... Oh, isn't that a great shot, Liam? Beautiful. They've got a really distinct... White rhino got a really distinct hump on the on the top of their neck there. 
that big sort of hump on their shoulder. This is just a beautiful encounter, folks. I can't tell you how happy this makes me feel to see these animals here and to show them to you and explain to you the importance of learning more about them and learning about what's going on in the world. And please do that after you've uh, finished with them. There's lots of ge Na National Geographic information about them. Uh, you can look on any of the websites and there's also lots of other organisational websites of uh, non-profit organisations that are dedicating their time to protecting these beautiful animals. So please go off and afterwards try and find some more things out about them. And uh, I just wanted to spend time talking about the glory and the magnificence of them today. And uh, you can obviously to find out some more information yourselves, but just let's sit with them and just enjoy this incredible, incredible moment. We've got these two coming up the road here next to us as well, which we uh, can get you a little shot of. They're just coming up to my side at the moment. So we've got a question coming through. I'll just wait for this question, folks. We just got a message on Twitter from Sanjeev. Hi, mate. Welcome aboard. And fantastic to have you with us. Um, Sanjeev wanted to know whether um, uh, black and white rhinos actually interbreed. They definitely don't uh, interbreed, Sanjeev. They're two uh, very different species, um, very different looking as well when you, you put one next to each other. Not that you see it very often, that's for sure. But um, if you were to be able to look up online or in a, in a book, you'll definitely see you in a guidebook you'll see the difference between them. If we get a chance later when we're driving and get a bit of a quiet spot, I'll show you uh, uh, two pictures of them, Sanjeev. Uh, but just it's, it's a really good thing to get in into your head and, and just get the sort of different body shapes in mind and it'll show you the differences between them. But just to answer your question, um, they definitely don't interbreed. But it's a, it's a good one. It's a definitely an interesting question because you think, uh, you know, they're both rhinos. Potentially that could happen, but it doesn't. And... Uh, what we're looking at here is the southern white rhinoceros. There is a northern white rhinoceros that's critically endangered as well. Um, but if you need to know more information about all those those uh, areas, you can look up uh, on uh, CITES, which is the Convention in Trade of Endangered Species, C-I-T-E-S, CITES, and they will have an appendix list that will tell you all the numbers and the uh, estimations. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, goodness. Watch this, watch this. This could be interesting. just got a, a question from Lynn in London. Lynn, thank you very much for your question and it's, it's very kind to, uh, to ask why I, I sort of got a little bit overwhelmed uh, by them when I first saw them. And uh, I'm just going to turn around and just, they might just get a little bit startled from the engine here, so just, just please be aware, bear with me. Uh, I'm coming to you Lynn, I promise. I just want to get these guys in shot for you. Oh no, they're completely relaxed. I just want to straighten up a little bit, Lynn, and I'm definitely going to answer your question for you. Just going to move up here. They're perfectly ready. As are we. And there's no need to get try and get close. Rhino are not like elephant. Lynn, I'm definitely coming to your promise. But rhino are not like elephant. Uh, they they don't 
necessarily tolerate the same sort of proximity or you know, I'm just allowing them to dictate. But to answer your question, why I got overwhelmed um, is I, I've been working with these animals for about 20 years, 20, you know, coming up to 25 years. And uh, this is the animal that I came to Africa for when I was a kid. This is all I wanted to see. And now I used to lie in front of my television watching National Geographic documentaries about these animals. And now I'm talking to you live from Africa on National Geographic about them. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that for me. I'm not sure if you are happy to sit with these guys for a little bit longer, folks. This is a rare encounter, and uh, I just want you to tweet us now if you do. Uh, give us an indication if you're watching <coughs> online. should be fine. So come on boy. Completely fine my boy. We're just here to say hi and how wonderful you are buddy. Perfect. Goodness me. Talk about uh, an incredible thing to happen to on the night before we finish for me. Uh, I just wish Pete was here. It's okay, bud. It's absolutely fine, my friend. Yeah. Pete was sitting in the passenger seat with us as well, and Brian, and all the team, uh, because this is a, an incredible moment. But we're watching it, and we're watching it live. And I talked to Graham last night. Graham has worked tirelessly with his wife on this, and a big, a massive team behind this project. And you know what? If I was filming this now uh, and we were just going to take the footage back to London and make a film, that's still brilliant, that's still fantastic. But the magic for me right now is that this is live. Hmm. Wow. Goodness me. I'm just sitting in silence, folks, at the moment because uh, I had to pinch myself a second ago to make sure that this was actually happening.
just going to move up a little bit here, folks. He's completely fine, this boy. He's completely fine. And I'll explain to you what's going on in a second as well. Once. So I've just been observing them for the last five minutes and trying to figure out exactly who's who in this little uh, grouping. And it's all right, my boy. I promise I'm not gonna overstep the mark with you. I promise. There you go, buddy. All square. Folks, I'm going to ask you uh, honestly, and I would love to do this, and that's the beautiful thing about how interactive live safari is, and uh, <laughs> that little rabbit, did you see that? <laughs> that little rabbit has popped out of a out of the grass and gave that rhino a bit of a startle. Brilliant. Um, I want to know if you want to stay with these guys or if you want me to move on. I'm completely fine either way. But I just want to tell you what, this is a one-off and uh, this is a very rare moment. We're not going to, to do this again. But if you've had enough, uh, that's fine. I can talk a little bit more about the behavior if you'd like me to. I've just observed. Um, or if you'd like us to move off, tweet in or email us. We'll take an overwhelming majority either way. Uh, if it's sitting on the fence, um, we'll make the decision. But uh, if there's an overwhelming majority, the control room will tell us, and we can do that. But um, whilst we're waiting for that, so tweet us on hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv, folks, and uh, we'll make a decision just now. But in the meantime, we're going to just follow on. <laughs> It's okay, buddy. It's okay, mate. And there I go again talking to the animals, which is a little bit uh, odd, I know, but I can't help it. Uh, it's from my zookeeping days of walking up to, we got a lovely question about it yesterday. People wanted to know why I do it. And I, um, I, oh, he's doing something fantastic here. Can I just talk about something happening right now, folks, that this male's doing? So oh, I just want to fill you in. What's happening here is this, the, the reason why there was a little skirmish before is that it's a mother and her offspring. And the offspring's probably about, I'm having a guess at about two, it might not be her offspring, but I'm gathering it is. It's another female with that other individual. The one at the back is a bull. Now he's going to spray urinate there. See that? It's spray urinating territorial marking uh, and this other this bull is trailing her because I think he wants to know if she's coming into estrus he just she urinated a stream urine uh, onto the onto the the ground and he put his nose down there on top of that and then put his picked his lip up sort of folded his lip back over his nostrils it's the thing we were talking about before right at the beginning with the giraffe and basically what he was doing was captive, capturing the, uh, the scent and detecting whether she was in estrus and when she, whether she's ready to mate. It's a behavior called flemining, um, and it's a behavior that lots of the antelope, lots of the hoofed animals do it, even the carnivores do it, and they will hold that, that uh, scent in their nose or in their nasal cavity and uh, detect whether the females are in season and ready to mate. And uh, that's why this lad is having a little tantrum. Uh, and he was very, very amusing when he did it before. An animal that is, um, you know, <laughs> about 5,000 pounds or about 2,000 2, kilograms. Uh, and uh, yeah, he had a little bit of a tanty and rolled himself on the, on the ground and threw up a bit of dust and squealed and carried on. But. Uh, been four, four years since we were showing a, a rhino on safari, so I feel very, very privileged to be doing this. But I also want to tell you why, is because we obviously want to protect these animals, uh, and it's just really important for me and for everyone on the Wild Earth team at National Geographic, everyone, 
to, for you to know how important these animals are on the planet. Um, the, the, there's just there's just a massive, massive need for understanding. And uh, as I said, there's an incredible amount of great work going on to protect them. So please, when after you've watched the programming that we've been sending live from Africa, get online, find out more, see how you can contribute, see how you can make people aware of the, uh, the need to protect these magnificent creatures. This is an early Christmas present for me. Oh, he's going to lie down. Oh my goodness, this is just too good. Folks, I can't tell you how happy this makes me to hear uh, what you're overwhelming, and I just had the word repeated by Will three times, so I know when Will repeats anything three times, it's quite serious. Overwhelming, overwhelming, overwhelming response to stay with these animals. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's an early Christmas present for me. Let's see if they'll let us move up a little bit closer. <laughs> Easy, my boy. It's all right, my boy, we're just coming a little closer. It's all good. It's all good, matey. See those ears turning around. They can do a 180 turn. It's all right, my boy. All good. Well done, mate. Well done. Yeah, so please know that there was an absolute hours and hours of discussion about this and whether we were going to do it or not. But I just want you to, I wanted people to see, and we all did, that I really personally, deep down inside, I wanted people to see the beauty and the sheer magnitude of these beasts and how wonderful they are. They really are gentle giants. is a good day. Those ears, fantastic. Look at that, just pivoting around there. Little radar beacons, just picking up the information. Moving around, it's just brilliant to watch. 180 degree turn. Any signal or sign. And they can move independently, one can go one way, one can go the other. Just have a little glance 
over the, at the water hole there. There's got some quite nice action going on over there as well. This is a beautiful place to sit at the moment. We've got water buck coming down to drink, zebra, wildebeest, impala. Always great to keep your eyes out, just how uh, other things that are going on as well, folks. Because you never know what's around that next corner, my friends. species, five different species in front of us right now, plus yeah, we might move on soon, but uh, we might just sit for a little bit longer we are losing the light, but it's just such a pleasure to be with this boy and just observe um, particularly all of, you know, the different parts of his, his body and his armour. It looks like armour, doesn't it? But it actually got quite sensitive skin. So we've... Uh, We've been with these guys for some now, time now, and thank you very, very much, everyone, for your overwhelming support. And I think what we should probably do, folks, is just drive along a little bit and then go around and have a look at the, the dam, because across on the dam is some beautiful animals uh, coming over as well. And I think this rhino will probably be staying here. Uh, he might then get up and follow those females down. They're grazing their way down uh, the end. So, if that's all right with everyone, I just want to—he's just lying there. He may stand up as we drive past. <laughs> okay, my boy. He may not. He may trust us enough now that we're not a threat to him. And uh, okay, my boy. Good man. Well done, buddy. Well done, you. Excellent. Thanks, buddy. Wow. Oof. These other two I know have gone around the other side. Exactly where. Well, they might go down to drink, actually. Uh, who knows? going to go around and do a little scoot up there. I don't want to drive across the airstrip. We, we go across the airstrip at one particular point, so that's it.
Wow. So our, our boy is uh, off and walking. He's not going to let those females go too, uh, too far from him, so... I'll just get across the other side here. To offer his services, and she's not ready for that. Uh, so he's just trailing behind here. But there's a lot of posturing going on, and he'll he'll probably go up to her again, and then have a little tantrum again, uh, and then that will continue, and that carries on for quite some time until she's definitely uh, in the right zone for she's in estrus uh, and ready to mate. But they're uh, nice and close. something very 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 interesting about having that animal walk towards you it's just fantastic it's okay girls One would think that there's a lot of other different water points to drink from, wouldn't you? Uh, rather than this sort of algal, little algal pool here. Uh, but it must be okay. There's a little algae, algal bloom on the top of it, um, which he just pushes aside and then the other water underneath. Interesting behaviour. This is actually eating a little bit of the the mud there or the, the moss or something. Could be some sort of mineral content in that that she's uh, she's getting from it. Making a fantastic sound. Vim, if you can just put your camera onto this individual that's very close to us on the right, this female, I want you to listen to the sound of her lips eating the grass. It's fantastic. See if you can pick it up. Okay, my girl, no problem. And then if you just pan across, the boy has just rolled into this wallow. They have just been so magic, haven't they? Magical creatures. Everyone has to know how magical these creatures are. <laughs> hmm. 
She's a beauty. Oh, I need to have a drink. <clears throat> well, folks, I think it's time. I think it's time we left these beautiful creatures be. And I want to... <coughs> Just finished by saying to you uh, that was probably the highlight of the whole my whole time here in uh, this beautiful place. What I just saw then, and what I experienced with you, uh, I didn't know that was coming, but uh, that was for me an extraordinary experience to be doing that live with you uh, online and through National Geographic Wild. can't put it into words how wonderful that was we did it for a very special reason it's not going to be done again but i need you to see the magnificence of those creatures i need you to understand why they need to be here and it's a lot more than just the ecosystem and they fitting into the habitat and they fit in the scientifically and everything there's an in, there's just a value in them that doesn't really you can't put into words and i want you after this after you've watched this and finished Go online and, and look up and get some knowledge and improve your knowledge and figure out how you can help the plight of rhinos. I need you to do that. Please do it because these animals need our help. Let's cross to Pete. I'll see you just now. Thank you.